Today, I'm going to be training an army of Pokemon to defeat the three Mechanicer bosses in RimWorld Biotech DLC. Meet the hero of our story, Teenager Ash Mustard. Like an irresponsible parent, I'm allowing him to start his journey as a kid, sending him off into a brutal world where animals are forced to fight until one knocks the other unconscious. This is all so Ash can achieve his dream of becoming the world's best dog fi- I meant to say Pokemon trainer. Ash lives in Tulip Town, a nice, peaceful city where the townspeople are happy and never have to worry about unwanted visitors. He kicks off his journey by capturing his first Pokemon, a Pikachu, which he caught humanely, of course. There's an abundant amount of Pokemon to catch on the Rim World, but we're gonna start off with something easy. This Pidgey. Go, Pikachu! Break that Pidgey's legs! Ah, shit. Try to! Pikachu, I choose you to whoop that Pidgey's ass, but more gently this time. The second member of my Pokemon army has been caught. Soon I will be able to swarm my enemies with a legion of animals bred for combat. The next Pokemon up for capture was this Venonat. Pikachu, cripple that Venonat's nervous system with your god-given lightning powers. I think a combination of my turrets and Pikachu's almighty powers might have been a bit too much for its nervous system to handle. I continued capturing low-level Pokemon on the outskirts of town, growing my collection. And the ones I accidentally killed? Well... We doubled our numbers by purchasing cheap Pokemon that cannot fathom the hardship I will be putting them through. And soon came our first challenge. A wild manhunter pack of Goldians and a level 35 Sea King appeared. Ash gathered his Pokemon and sent them into battle. Things uh, weren't in our favor. We did kill the Sea King, but we lost most of our Pokemon in the process. I'm going to have to rethink my strategy. Instead of capturing as many Pokemon as I can, I'm going to focus on capturing the strongest Pokemon I can find around the map. But my Pokemon would die if they fight the stronger Pokemon on their own, so Ash is going to use a new method to weaken the stronger Pokemon so that he can capture them. The new method is working, allowing me to capture much stronger Pokemon and prevent losses. The shotgun technique does sometimes have unfortunate outcomes. Combining my new method of capture with advanced Pokeball research, I think I've built up a good-sized Pokemon force. I believe they are ready for their first real test. But first, this trader showed up willing to sell me some low-level cannon fodder. I gather my army and head out to attack a nearby base of a tribal faction. On our way there, we were ambushed by one guy, and I sent my Pokemon to tear him apart, limb from limb. Also, there was a Kangaskhan here. Upon our arrival at the tribal base, we moved into position, strategically placing the weak Pokemon in front to take damage for my higher level Pokemon. We lost several Pokemon, mostly the ones we had purchased to die for us, but they still honorably died for the cause. Ash almost lost more as several Pokemon went down on the trip back and had to be rescued when arriving back to Tulip Town. Also, my Pikachu changed their name sometime during that trip and now wants to be called Icarus. I would say this test was a success as most of my strong Pokemon lived and the weak ones, well, they did their job well, dying for the strong. I need to rebuild my army by leveling up my existing Pokemon and catching new ones. In the meantime, I'm gonna make some progress towards summoning the first boss. To summon the first boss, I'm gonna need to acquire a mech link. To do that, we need to break apart this ancient mech to get a transponder. <laughs> I almost lost some of the Pokemon I care about there. 
With the transponder acquired, we need to decrypt it and accept the quest that follows, which drops a ship from the sky with mechanoids and a corpse. You might not think so initially, but that corpse is actually what we're after. That corpse has a mech link. Once the mechs begin their attack, I was going to let the town's defensive turrets kill them off, but apparently my colonists want to die as they keep sprinting out of the town into danger. I now get to play a cool minigame called Stop Your Colonists From Doing Something So Incredibly Stupid That It Will Most Likely End In Their Death. When the last of the mechs were finally defeated, Ash extracted the mech link and installed the link into himself, transcending his fleshy form to become an amalgamation of man and machine, called a Mechanitor. All of this effort was so that I could get this construction robot. Just kidding, I need a Mechanitor to summon the bosses. The first of the three bosses, the Diabolus, is now available to summon. Oh, by the way, Ash had a kid. Now what should I name him? What a beautiful child. For my final preparations to fight the first boss, I used a moonstone to evolve my Nidoran into a Nido King. He is a cutie, isn't he? With the addition of Nido King, Ash's Pokemon army is ready to take on the first boss. We call forth the Diabolus, and when he arrives, Ash takes his Pokemon army out to confront him. After a tough battle, but not really though as we only lost two Pokemon, the Diabolus was defeated. As a result of the victory, we obtained the Signal Chip. The Signal Chip allows us to research the next technology which enables us to call in the second boss. On second thought, maybe it was a tough battle as Nidoking was hurt pretty bad and he's dead. Well, time to turn him into a delicious Pokemeat meal. I fear that for the second boss, Ash might need a stronger army. The problem is, Ash has caught most of the strong Pokemon around Tulip Town. So he collects all his Pokemon and goes out on an expedition to catch them all. And by catch them all, I mean a Hypno, a Haunter, and a Farfetch'd. By the time I had caught those three, my caravan's food was almost out, so we headed back to base where a Beedrill had spawned waiting to be captured. The next boss up is the War Queen. Unlike the Diabolus, who had a massive f***ing laser, her special ability is to summon little drones to fight for her. This fight is going to be a numbers game, so we want to capture and buy some expendable lives to throw away for our cause. With standard mech tech researched, we can build a mech band antenna. Once activated, the antenna will summon the War Queen. Before summoning the War Queen, I'm going to use my newly constructed Fossil Resurrector. This machine allows me to make Pokemon from fossils that are found while mining around the map. I will be using one of my rare pieces of amber to make an Aerodactyl. Nothing is happening, I, I think it bugged. Never mind, on to the boss fight. Ash flips the switch of the antenna, challenging the War Queen to a battle. After brutally beating her in a corner for quite a while as she had so much health, we finally achieved victory and obtained the Power Focus Chip. The Power Focus Chip is used to research high mech tech, which unlocks the mech band dish to summon the third and final boss, the Apocriton. I feel like I want to shake things up a little. Up to now, I have been building a Pokemon army, trying to subdue my enemies with the sheer power of numbers. I want to take a more classical Pokemon approach and build up a team of six strong, well-trained Pokemon to take on the final boss. The thing is, I have way more than six Pokemon. So only a few of you are gonna make Varsity, and the rest, uh... Yeah, they, uh, helped fulfill our daily nutritional needs. With my current roster down to six Pokemon, 
my restructuring still wasn't finished. I'm not satisfied with this goofy-ass lineup. I want to go out into the world and catch new, cooler Pokémon to replace my current team. With my new team caught and the old ones replaced, it is time to begin their training. Well, actually it's not time for it yet. A group of tribals decided to raid us. I was preparing to fight them, but they dug into the ancient danger that was located a little bit too close to my base. Good news, the tribals cleared out the bugs. The bad news is that I should probably deal with the people in the cryosleep caskets before I accidentally wake them up. Since I just captured my Pokemon team and a lot of them are lower levels, I don't want to risk any of them getting hurt. So I'm going to have to use a different approach. And that way is filling the room with flammable wood flooring, installing some flame turrets, chucking a molly in, and watching my enemies get cooked. Oh, and once again play the game of preventing my colonists from killing themselves. Other than that, my plan worked. Now it's time for training. After finally leveling up my team so they all have access to their most powerful moves, I have assembled the perfect Pokemon squad. In classic Kibbles Jack fashion, I'm going to do a trial run with this team on the technologically disadvantaged. Pokemon. Wrong. It's the lifeless corpses of my foes. I think we're ready. With high mech tech done, we construct the mech band dish to call in the Apocriton. Ash summons the Apocriton, and it's now a waiting game for the mech boss to arrive. While nervously awaiting the final battle, Ash tries to calm himself by having a nice pokey meat meal. If I had to guess, he was probably eating Pidgeotto. We achieved victory, and Ash became the very best Pokemon master of the Rim World. We didn't have any losses, as these Pokemon were built tough from their training of brutalizing wild Pokemon and slaughtering tribals. With this victory, the residents of Tulip Town can go about their lives as they did before, living in peace. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, or are a really cool person, you should watch my previous video where I explored my deep-seated hatred of tribals in RimWorld. I go on a quest to kill them all, and vow to never stop until every tribal is destroyed.